Here's everything toxic the world's largest search engine did in 2022. To kick off the year, Google Street View photographed a mafia boss in Spain, leading to his arrest after more than 20 years on the run. This is the first and only positive news story about facial recognition ever. In unrelated news, Apple Maps then erected a giant digital wall around Tim Cook's house. And by gigantic digital wall, they mean it appears more pixelated than a Lego man's junk. According to Trump, it was coded by Mexico, who paid for it. Some of the coders, I assume, are good people. If anything, it just looks more obvious now. Apple privacy changes then wiped 278 billion in market value from Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and Pinterest. I'm not sure how Pinterest managed to get on that list, it's more surprising than when you see Roku on a smart digital TV remote. Interestingly, this didn't impact Google much because they have a monopoly over other areas of the internet, like search and productivity tools. I love it when we get articles like this because it shows us the companies who are valued for violations of privacy. It was then revealed that Google had a secret project to convince employees that unions suck. Not suspicious at all. I guess their biggest fear is losing too many employees before they could automate all their jobs. If I had a pound for every American tech giant who said, union sucks, I'd have enough money to launch a Google rival. To end the month, Google created a Stephen Hawking doodle. It's about time. In February, Russia declared an unjust war on Ukraine and everyone, except Putin, sided with Ukraine. I know there's more to this story than that, but I'm trying to stay focused on the Google element of the story and not the unjustified war element of the story. In retaliation, Google and YouTube cut off money to Russia. Putin then demanded Google restore access to their YouTube channel in Ukraine. Google responded, we didn't do anything, but we are experiencing some issues in your region. Have you tried turning it off and on again? How about new, you crazy Russian bastard? Google then lowered salaries in North Carolina for workers that striked. Although I take that article with a mountain of salt because the Washington Post is owned by Bezos. Amazon is a competitor to Google, especially in the cloud service space. And that same article speaks up Amazon's new offices in the same area. Coincidence? I think not. After all, the best strike is working somewhere else. The FBI then used location data to solve arson cases linked to the BLM protests. If this is gonna teach us anything, it's if you're gonna commit a crime, do it with your location data off. Or don't use a peaceful protest and give it a bad name. You assholes. In March, a lawsuit accused Google of systematic racial bias against black employees, alleging that it pays them less and denies them opportunities. The lawsuit is ongoing, but I'm interested to see if they would actually be so brazen or stupid to do this. In unrelated news, Google employees are becoming unhappy with pay, promotions, and execution. I'm also unhappy with executions, but I live in the UK where that's not really a thing anymore. Google was then accused of setting up bait and switch websites, which allowed them to take a cut from restaurant orders rather than directly ordering from that restaurant's website. Like a modern day e-mafia shaking down local businesses for their cuts. In Google's defense, which is not something I say often, they did make it clear on their website that you can turn off the buy now through Google button. Or to be more accurate, they turned it on by default and then hid the page that told you how to turn it off assuming that customers and restaurants just wouldn't mind. Then, for some unknown reason, Android added a feature which allowed users to quickly delete the last 15 minutes of their Google search history. It takes me twice as long as that to decide which <clears throat> video I'm gonna watch. So now we all know one thing for definite, Someone at Google HQ has some very specific porn preferences. Russia didn't learn from their earlier attempts to throw their toys out of the pram and demanded Google doesn't show footage from the war. Your Honor, I object! And why is that, Mr. Reed? Because it's devastating to my case! Overruled. If Google had agreed to this, I could imagine a lot of criminals would be emailing Ring asking them nicely to not film them breaking into houses. I'll make you a deal, Putin. We demand you stop invading Ukraine. You go first and we'll do something you want after. April didn't start well for Google, as large fines meant they were forced to give European users a reject all cookies button. They considered giving Americans the same option, but figured they'd never turn down a free cookie. Google was then made to explain its algorithm to the EU. Given how badly questioning went in Congress a few years ago, it will come as no surprise to anybody that this went about as smoothly as trying to teach a badger to do a backflip, with Google using all the tech jargon in the book while legislators nodded along 
unsure of what was being said. In random news, Google then banned all third-party call recording apps from the Play Store. When asked why they were doing this, a Google spokesperson said, you don't need the apps, we're already recording everything anyway. In thanks for doing that news, Google stopped hiding Russian secret sites on their maps. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my actions coming to bite me on the ass. Google, if you're uh, watching this, I dare you to do China next. And finally, police were found to be blasting Disney music to stop people from recording arrests and conversations. The idea was that if copyrighted music was playing in the background, it would get a strike when the video was uploaded to YouTube and either not get boosted or get taken down. Imagine being beaten up to be our guest or being shot in the leg and all you can hear is, let it go. In May, Google map workers clashed with management over remote working policies, claiming they couldn't afford the trips back to the office. It's weird watching these debates play out and I genuinely wonder who's gonna win. Companies having to let employees work from home due to the increased cost of living or companies having to increase their employees' salary to get them to come back into the office. I know which one I'd pick. Texas, Indiana, Washington State, and the District of Columbia filed separate lawsuits because Google's private browsing mode isn't really private. No shit! Why do you think they had to rename it incognito mode? Look, I have a ton of issues with Google. I've been recording for three hours now, but they clearly state when you open a new window what they do and don't take from you. If you click OK without reading those terms, you're making me side with Google, and that's not a hill I want to die on. Google's DeepMind then claimed they are close to achieving human level AI. I've seen human intelligence, and as a result, I am not worried. Pretty sure this is the last we'll hear about this. Simon didn't know, but he would hear about this again. In June, a Google engineer believed their AI chatbot had come to life. To quote a film that I don't know particularly well, the ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Eventually, Google responded saying that it's not sentient, it's just really well coded. But that's exactly what a sentient chatbot would say. It turned out it was just a lonely, overworked Google employee who convinced himself that the chatbot was a person because the technology was so cutting edge. To me, all this proved is that not only is AI coming for our jobs, full video on that link below, but also AI might be better at being human than most humans. The FCC urged Google and Apple to ban TikTok because the data on American users could be seen by the Chinese government. Fun game, who do you trust more with your data? The US or the Chinese government? Answers in the comments below. In his tweet, Federal Communications Commissioner Brendan Carr said that the app is like a wolf in sheep's clothing. YouTube Shorts sees this as an epic win. If you're unsure as to whether TikTok is as bad as they say, you can check out my video of everything toxic they did this year, linked below. TLDR, Chinese billionaires, bad. American billionaires, Good. The American Supreme Court overturned Roe vs Wade in a move which took the country back 60 years. As a citizen of a country that's just gone through Brexit, I have to say, welcome to the 1960s. You're gonna love it. Now credit where they're doing the bare minimum is due. Google wrote an open letter to employees saying they can relocate to states with abortion rights and began auto deleting abortion clinic visits from people's location data history. I mean, it would be nice if they didn't store any of our data, but baby steps, man, baby steps. Also, when did they become the good guys in this video? Democrats then asked Apple and Google to stop apps from using data mining to target people seeking abortions. It's almost like data privacy should be standard. A Facebook spokesperson did say that they'd be happy to sell any and all data for the right price. Oh, and then they told their employees, not to talk about abortions at work? The fuck, Zuck? In July, Russia hit Google with a $375 million fine for allowing prohibited Ukrainian news on its platforms. Go home, Putin, you're drunk. Russia searched on Google and found images from their unjust war and asked Google to delete them. Google declined and now Russia is accusing Google of not deleting materials promoting extremism and terrorism across its platforms. I guess when asking nicely wasn't working, you do have to find a legal loophole. How American of them. Ironically, legally, Google can't pay this money as US sanctions would block the money from leaving the country. So mm. then Google finally admitted they're losing out on search traffic in the Gen Z market as nearly half of all toddlers use TikTok and Instagram for search over Google. I've got a full video on why this matters and how TikTok became a more trusted search engine for Gen Z 
linked below. In no shit Sherlock news, preteens are also watching more TikTok than YouTube, presumably because a lot of YouTube videos are purposefully slowed down and drawn out to hit the 10 minute mark as ad revenue has become more important than quality for some creators. Whereas I edit for speed because I actually respect your time. So why not become a Patreon and help me claw back some of that sweet, sweet ad dollar that I'm missing out on? Why do you think TikTok has delayed the rollout of 10 minute videos? And I'm sure it's totally unrelated, but it would also appear that YouTube's recommendation engine is putting people off. 71% of people said the majority of videos they regretted watching were recommended. Again, it comes back to TikTok's algorithm supports small creators as it mixes what's relevant with what's viral. How are Google and Instagram missing the mark this badly? You've got billions. I've got £9.43 in my bank account and I can work this out. But it's not all bad. YouTube said they will remove videos with abortion misinformation in them. But not the ads. The ads are still cool. In August, Google employees were told they weren't working hard enough, just as the quiet quitting trend was in full swing. That's executive speak for, we're losing out on market share to TikTok. So now we have to save money by scaring you into working harder. And anyone who doesn't work harder will be fired and their work will be handed off to another scared employee. For those of you who don't know, quiet quitting is where an employee just does their job. They don't take on any extra unpaid tasks or any extra hours. It blows my mind that this is a problem. You get paid to do a job, so you do the job. But apparently, corporate doesn't see it that way. Google then started to tweak its algorithm. First, they changed how they calculate emissions on Google Flights to make air travel look cleaner. Think of it like the calorie counter on menus that we all know and love. They tweaked the algorithm to only calculate carbon dioxide emissions from flights, rather than a cumulative effect of all greenhouse gases. They did this after consulting major airlines, academic bodies, and industry partners. Lobbying. <coughs> Sorry about that. So by changing how they calculate emissions, they've made flights look less harmful to the planet. If you listen really closely, you can hear Taylor Swift's PR team making notes. Next, they changed their search algorithm to tackle clickbait. Alternative headlines they could have gone with include, you won't believe what Google is gonna do to tackle clickbait, and Harry Potter, Putin, COVID, and more clickbait that Google hates. Oh, and Google will no longer answer your stupid questions. It turns out your mum lied to you and there is such a thing as a stupid question. In a new blog post, Google announced a shakeup to its snippets feature. This technology also powers the smart speakers and voice assistants, but because snippets are auto-generated, sometimes they're not only wrong, but actively damaging. Is Obama planning a coup? According to secrets of the Fed, according to details exposed in Western Center for Journalism's exclusive video, not only could Obama be in bed with the communist Chinese, but Obama may in fact be planning a communist coup d'etat at the end of his term in 2016. So Google plans to not give answers when it thinks a good one doesn't exist, or has nothing useful to say, something it calls data voids. This is also something that 90% of the internet could learn from. And next we got the Google Fine of the Month. It's the Google Fine of the Month. Google was fined $40 million for misleading Android users about their location tracking settings. Yeah, that'll learn them. Basically, Google said that if you turned off your location history, they wouldn't be tracking you. But in reality, you also had to turn off the app and web activity setting. And this, much like your mum, was turned on by default. Australia's Competition and Consumer Commission, which is surprisingly hard to say three times quickly, put out a press release which explained that Google had used dark patterns to trick millions of users. Full video on what a dark pattern is and the attempts to legislate them out of existence can be found linked below. Google originally thought that it would appeal the decision, but decided not to bother, which is code for the fine is significantly less than what we made on it, so Fuck it. Once more for the people at the back. A fine that is significantly less than what a company earned by misleading its users is just a slap on the wrist. Oh, and the law lets Ring and Google share users' footage with police during emergencies without consent or warrants. It's not the law, it's their unreadable terms of service. Full video on that link below. I mean, it's all fun and games till they change the definition of 
an emergency. It's September and Google lost an antitrust ruling in the EU due to unlawful restrictions put on Android users that gave them a monopoly over the mobile search engine market. But in good news, if you're Google, the fine was cut to just $4.12 billion. Then we got the Google fine of the month. It's the Google fine of the month. I paid for that voiceover, so I'm bloody gonna use it. Google were fined $72 million for unauthorized collection of personal data. And then Fitbit announced that from 2023, all users will need a Google account to log in. Allowing the company to access more of our biometric data. Oh, pipe down, Barry. Google own Fitbit. They're only doing this so they can sync up all your device data to make it worth more, not because they don't already have access to it. Full video on everything Google owns, linked below. And finally, a Google DeepMind researcher co-authored a paper saying that AI will eliminate humanity. I'm starting to worry that one day, AI will read all these headlines and link eliminate humanity with AI takeover and assume it's what it's meant to do. It's October and YouTube is loving recommending conservative videos regardless of your beliefs. It turns out the YouTube rabbit hole ends with a collaboration video between Hitler and Jim Davidson. Google then increased the price of YouTube premium by 27%, which is great news for me because I'm saving another $5 a month by not subscribing to it. I'm guessing someone at YouTube HQ saw how well the price hike was going at Netflix and thought, yeah, we'll have some of that. Included in the price hike is an ad-free experience and you can watch videos in 4K. Or you can get an ad blocker for free and 99% of people won't notice they're watching videos in 1080p. In the price of doing business news, Google will pay the state of Arizona $85 million over allegedly tracking Android users and the state of Texas sued Google for allegedly capturing biometric data of millions of users without their consent. A Google spokesperson said, we're always working to minimize the data we collect with a straight face. And that, kids, is why we can never trust big tech. And finally, Google gave Truth Social a big thumbs up so you can now download it in the Play Store. And the crowd goes mild. I give it a week before it's removed for some sort of violation. In November, India fined Google $113 million, which is about five seconds of their revenue. And they ordered Google to allow third-party payment apps in the Play Store. A Google spokesperson said, oh, are there other payment methods? We didn't know. We will get to that eventually, eventually. Then we discovered 80 million people are paying for the ad-free YouTube experience. And I discovered as a creator, I get paid more per view from people watching stuff with this subscription. I'd just like to retract any jokes about YouTube Premium in this or any other video that I've uploaded. When did I become a corporate shell? You always become the thing you hate the most. Friendly reminder that this video is part of a series of videos that I've created for the end of the year involving everything toxic Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, Google, and TikTok did. You can find them all linked below. And finally, while Meta, Twitter, and Amazon went on firing sprees, Google was noticeably absent from this trend. But investors were not happy about this, insisting they pay employees less to cut costs, even though their profit margin is around 30%, and their average revenue per employee was a high $1.6 million. Imagine if you worked at Google and you knew you were bringing in an average of $1.6 million in revenue for the company and you're getting paid around 40,000. And the shareholders bust into a room and say, nah mate, you're still getting paid too much. Stop paying the people who make the product and pay me, the person who just put some money into the company and doesn't actually contribute to the growth, even more. If 6% growth in a recession with TikTok taking a chunk of your search traffic isn't enough for you, Get out now, fuck's sake. In December, Google said that 60% of the internet is duplicates. In December, Google said that 60% of the internet is duplicates. In December, Google said that 60% of the in- It turns out that 60% of the internet is duplicate or similar content. If you're interested in how the rest of the internet is made up, it's 50% scams, 80% porn, 10% Wikipedia, and 5% bad mass jokes. Having been the only big tech company to not go on a firing spree back in November, we discovered why when Google shared their secret project that's teaching AI to write and fix code. <coughs> Automation. <coughs> mm. 
sorry about that. To round off the month, 130,000 UK businesses sued Google in a class action lawsuit worth almost 14 billion pounds. The lawsuit claims that Google used their market dominance to make money off small businesses while not actually pushing out their adverts correctly. Shocked Pikachu face? You know what might come in handy right about now? Some help from the EU. But hey, we gotta keep all those fish and at least we're only losing our own currency. Am I right, lads? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed it. The other videos in this series are linked below, and while you're down there, give me a like, comment, subscribe, share the video, all that good stuff. Godspeed. I'll see you all next week.